to the studio. We have um, an interview in the house, and um, I would let the gentleman introduce himself to us. And he is a um, uh, world leader here. We uh, will talk about um, the situation in the world of the Africa. So let's keep it right at nine point three. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you. All right. My name is Nandi Khan. I am the leader of the Indigenous School of BF. All right. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. And I'm here, I, I'm told that you're just coming into town, right, for a special yes. program. Yes, I've been here for a couple of days. Okay. We had our Heroes Day Remembrance on the 30th here uh, in Atlanta at the Martin Luther King Jr. Center, and an event well attended by people, or by the Africans, right across the United States of America. All right, now, can you give us an idea about your organization or your um, group, the Biafran people? Yes. And uh, tell us more. Give us an in-depth, um, you know, view of what it is that you are working towards. The indigenous people of Biafra is a collection of Biafrans right across the world people who have dedicated themselves to the peaceful pursuit of the restoration of the Afra. We are spread across over 88 countries around the world. We have a significant presence here in the United States as well. And our objective is to restore the Afra the way it was before the British came, before the colonial masters came that we may retain some semblance of dignity and be able to live in our land and be able to develop it as well as we can fit. All these things are not possible right now because of the rather warped arrangements that we find ourselves in in Nigeria. We are nothing works. We are ethnic nationalities that were living side by side peacefully before the advent of colonialism are today at each other's throat, which has negatively impacted on human and social development. All these anomalies are the things that we are trying to correct, and we hope to spread that very message through the gospel by indigenous people of the Africa. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand um, I understand several years ago um, that ended and Nigeria, the Afro became a part of Nigeria. I, like I spoke to a gentleman the other day, uh, I just want to be amazed to understand how removed you guys are from Nigeria, a country that is part of you. mind, I would say, rejection and repudiation. The entire essence of Biafra, what it means to be an Igbo, an Efik, an Ejo person, to name but a few, has been totally rejected by the Nigerian state. There is an orchestrated plan to diminish, to emasculate, and to render hopeless, so to speak, everything that has to do with Biafra. That is why no seaport in Biafra land is functional. We don't have any viable airport. Our roads are non-existent. There is little or no significant federal government project or presence right across Biafra land. People are wallowing in unimaginable poverty. There is repression. There is torture. There is arbitrary arrest. There is execution. There is high handedness. And there is double standard. The Fulani people who are going about killing people are regarded as honorable citizens of Nigeria. They are being paid to go out to kill people. 
the letters being an installment of 100 billion naira that was given to them in order for them to stop killing innocent civilians. That is the mess that we are forced to live with within Nigeria, where nothing works, the schools are not functioning, the universities are not fit for purpose, and I do not think that any right-thinking human being will subscribe or aspire to live within such a regrettable and repressive geopolitical space. Uh, let me ask you, um, the, the African state, uh, the African area that you're talking about, could you give me the specific areas where these are the African state? I would say Lower Benue, the entire southeast, the five states of the southeast, and also five states from the so-called south-south. In other words, going by ethnic nationalities, the Igbos, the Ijaws, the Efics, the Bibios, the Yanangs, the Doma people, the Gala people, the Shekiris, the Robos, and Isokos. Well, all those people that you just named, I know quite a few from those areas, are they quite successful people. I don't understand, and now I'm not Nigerian, but I'm an African. Yes. And I, I believe that um, Nigeria is one country. I don't understand why you want to separate from Nigeria to be Biafra all over again when you are a unit right now. Nigeria has never been one country. It is an artificial creation by the British to serve their parochial economic interest. The name Nigeria means nothing in any of the traditional indigenous lexicons we have right across Africa. To force to accept Nigeria means forcing us to accept white supremacy. It means asking us to jettison everything that we have lived for for the past 5,000 years. I am not sure that anybody can go to Europe and aspire to create an artificial country out of the ones that have been existing before that very person's arrival. To maintain the artificial colonial boundaries drawn up by the European masters in Africa is a disservice to humanity and is one of the principal reasons why Africa have been struggling to develop or to be taken seriously as a viable place where civilized people can come from. Therefore, we are making it very clear to the whole world, especially to your listeners, that Nigeria is a contraption. It never existed before 1914, but people inhabited those lands before 1914. So what were they called? That is what we are seeking to go back to, a reassertion of our identity to enable us to be able to develop as other civilized countries have managed to do. You cannot put people together with divergent value systems, no cohesion in terms of economic thinking or religion, and you expect something good to come out of it. That is why the entire sub-Saharan Africa is replete with nations who are struggling and who are wallowing in abject poverty. That is an orthodoxy we are determined to challenge. You have a question to sing it? Um, I, I'm just curious to know what your strategic approach is to making your stance. Is it an approach of peace, like the values of MLK, for example? Are you being violent about it? What, what is your approach, your strategy? We are entirely peaceful. Our strategy is civil disobedience. We have learned from the very effective use of that social phenomena, even here in Atlanta from the likes of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and also Mahatma Gandhi to an extent. All we are asking for is a referendum. We are not seeking for war. We are not looking to fight anybody. We are not looking to shed any blood. All we are asking for is an opportunity for our people to decide and determine their future the same way that it happened, not just in Soviet Union, but also in Yugoslavia and most recently in Southern Sudan. What we are asking for is a peaceful dissolution of Nigeria and the emergence of Biafra within the International Committee of Nations. Well, you mentioned um, 
Southern Sudan. But before I go to that question, I'd like to understand the states that um, the Biafran people um, are living, you mentioned the Igos, etc. Don't they function with, I mean, within the, the, the Nigerian government, where they have senators, they have governors, they have people that um, sort of advocate for you guys. Don't you have those? The Nigerian political arrangement does not allow for what I would refer to as effective advocacy to address repression and apartheid. What is happening in Nigeria is a far more sophisticated system of discrimination and apartheid and as recently acknowledged by the former head of state, Ulisha Gunabasanjo, this very program of colonization permeates every strata of society. In other words, those that you call senators and representatives, unless you are in support of the Fulani agenda, you will not be elected. Unless you're in support of the Fulani agenda, you will be read out of office. It is a very mean, relentless political machinery that will grind into the dust any opposition that they encounter. What they are seeking to do is to turn us to some kind of mini Hausa state where although the Hausa people have their language, everything else has been fulanized. They have no home, they have no hope, they have no political dimension, and they have no cultural value. Everything has been subsumed under this huge umbrella of Fulani jihadi concept, so to speak. Unless you're part of them, you will not be elected into office. Unless you're part of them, your political aspirations will never even get taken off. Well, I mean, that's a strong um, statement to make. Um, the, the, the population of Nigeria is 50-50, Christian 50, um, uh, Muslim 50-50, right? So um, why are you targeting the, the, the full of it? Yes, we know that they, they have the uh, Book of Ram and all that situation, but they're not only fighting your group, they're fighting the whole of Nigeria. And um, as far as we know, internationally, the Nigerian government is fighting back with the help of international organizations. Why would you say you have to be a part of the Fulani group to be elected in office when in Lagos, for example, you, I mean, the, the Fulani, most of them don't live in that area. They do not. For you to appreciate what I'm saying or the magnitude of it, I'll give you a very simple example. Two Yoruba men have risen to the apex office in Nigeria, Ulusheguno Basenjo and Ernest Shonekon. Those two men were put into office by Fulani men, not by Yorubas. Yorubas never voted for Basenjo to start with. The only Yoruba man that came out or that had a semblance of independent mindedness, who is MK or Abiola, the Fulani refused and he never made it into office. They killed him in the process. That is the power that they wield. That is the might that they control. They're not doing it alone. The British is helping them. I am British, but I have to speak the truth. The British government elevated the Fulani class to a position of political power and authority to lord it over everybody. And for that very specific reason, some of their excesses that has to do with terrorism, not just one terrorist group, mind you, but four funded and staffed by only Fulani people, Boko Haram, the Fulani headsmen, ISIS in West Africa, and Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. No sane human being will wish to remain in the same country with people that do not value human life. I don't want us to underestimate the power that they wield. Every layer of government, be it judiciary, the army, the police, the executive, everywhere is staffed by Fulani people. It is a level of nepotism 
that no one has ever encountered before. That is the reality on the ground, and that is what we're having to do with on a daily basis. Would it be that before the people are the ones that are voting, and the, um, the rest of the nation is not really putting enough effort or energy in, um, in the electoral uh, process in Nigeria? There is nothing like an electoral process in Nigeria, and it is not that the Fulanese are voting. The British taught them how to rig elections, and they have, over the years, perfected it. Unfortunately, some Yoruba people, like Bola Meditinibu, have allowed himself or his judgment to be clouded by his singular pursuit of the presidency in 2023. And for that very reason, he has more or less acquiesced. He is prepared to allow the Fulani the space to carry out what I call political, cultural, and social impunity because of power. And today, everybody is paying the price for that. They do not vote. They go to Chad and they go to Niger Republic to import even children of four years old to thumbprint ballot boxes to have the numbers inflated that they may retain their preeminent position in the political hierarchy in that very dreadful country called Nigeria. It is a well-rehearsed approach. It is something they have been doing from 1952, and they will not stop until they are compelled to do so. Well, how do you wish to go about this? Or how, what's your plan? Our plan is to remain on the path of peaceful agitation and civil disobedience in every way that we can until they see the need to grant us our referendum. We are in contact with governments of the world. Of course, you know it is not an easy process, but it's something that we are determined to do. Apartheid South Africa went through the same phase of subjugation of the majority or acting contrary to the will of the majority. The same way that these Fulani jihadists are behaving today in Nigeria. But one thing is certain, we are not going to stop our agitation. We are not going to stop protesting. We are not going to stop lobbying the international community until Biafra is restored. Does the UN recognize Biafra right now? Is it recognized? Everybody knows about Biafra. In terms of official recognition, the answer is no. Okay. Also, well, how would you uh, translate the, the uh, problem, united we stand, divided we fall, if the agenda of the Biafra is seen to divide? Aren't we supposed to all fight a common enemy if we keep mentioning the British as the ones who would empower the particular sector? Nigerian geographical and cultural uh, population. Are we not faced? Who are we agitated towards? The government or the British? I will say the ignorance of the black man is the primary um, source of the problems we're encountering today. As black people, I don't feel sorry for myself. I like to speak the truth always, regardless of the consequences. We have not actually excelled in terms of being able to analyze situations and articulating a way forward out of every mess that we find ourselves in in Africa. Of course, the common enemy is imperialism. The common enemy is poverty. The common enemy is backwardness. The common enemy is lack of infrastructure and all the rest of it. But the only way to resolve it is to allow people to express their views freely, not to be compelled to do so by an arrangement that is not only alien to Africa, but is counterproductive to our yearnings and aspiration in the 21st century. You do not force people to belong together. Britain have just voted to leave the EU. They're finalizing that very arrangement. The European Union, is an amalgamation of willing democracies in Western Europe to commonize their interest 
and their political development. We were not giving that very opportunity. If you say to the Yorubas, to the Igbos, to the Yefis, to the thieves to come together to agree a common formula of governance, I will begin to accept that. But nobody asked us about Nigeria. A British company came to trade and from there they started to experiment with us. They created a country which I maintain is artificial and has no basis in natural justice, no law, and it will be inimical to our progress for us to accept it. If there is some sort of sovereign national conference that allows us to be together as a nation, people agree their constitution and how they cohabit or how they coexist. That is also excusable and understandable, but having all these artificial imposition on Africa is the reason why we are poor till this very day, the reason why there is mass migration into Europe, people dying in the Sahara Desert, people drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, where we have lost our shame, we have no dignity and we have no honor because the template that we are working towards was written for us by somebody else. There are intelligent people in Nigeria, I believe, or I'm forced, I'm led to believe, who can come together and decide a future for their people. If that type of arrangement were to take place, if that is the arrangement that I'm fighting against, perhaps you may have a very valid point. But the fact of the matter is that what we have before us is an arrangement that we did not subscribe to, is an arrangement we did not buy into, and is an arrangement we did not agree to. And that is why we are doing everything we can to make sure that it doesn't exist anymore. Okay. How does radio? There's a radio, Radio Biafra, right? Yes, we have Radio Biafra. Where, where is it headquartered? It's sort of in London. In London. Yes. In London. And how effective has Radio Biafra been as a press tool to put the message across? We've managed to use Radio Biafra to counter most of the lies and misinformation about Biafra. We have used Radio Biafra to mobilize our people all over the world. Without Radio Biafra, the effectiveness of our Heroes Day Remembrance, which was observed all over the world, would not have been possible. These are the issues at hand and Radio Biafra continues to lead the way in making sure that our people are properly informed. Okay, we've got four minutes to go, but we do have um, someone on the line. Hello, Carla? How are you? Okay, you have a question? My name, my name is... Not at all. I want everybody to be independent on their own. If you then want to have a country called Nigeria, people will then sit around the table to discuss it and to agree the modalities. That is what I'm saying, in effect. Free will of the people must prevail, as it is in America. Not at all. I was actually born the day that Biafra was declared. And let me say this to you. We have to fight wars to survive. America fights war every blessed year. This very second, America is fighting a war somewhere in the world. It does not matter how many years it takes or how many wars. I beg your pardon? A lot of people we are lost and we will lose even more to make sure that Biafra comes. Yes, we lost a lot of people and we are prepared to sacrifice many more to ensure that Biafra comes. I have answered your question. The answer is yes, yes, and yes. Okay. And let me repeat, now, we will fight now, another on, war now, this is to this ensure is that Biafra happen. comes. Um, you indicated that you, you indicated that your 
organization is a peaceful one. Now yes. you're talking about war. So which are you? Are you? No, no. There, there, there is this. There is this. Um, there is this thinking in Africa. There is this thinking in Africa that self-preservation is the end all and be all of human existence. What we are trying to say is that life is meaningless if there is no freedom. Life is meaningless if there is no dignity. Yes, go ahead. Again, if you allow me to answer you. Okay. We're going to have to, we're going to. No, I, I want to address this very question. Yes, please. Um, that is the misinformation we've been talking about and what we said of Radio Biafra. There is nothing like South South nor Niger Delta. There are concoctions by people that wish to divide Biafra. And there is oil right across every Igbo state. The largest gas reserve in Africa is in Igbo state, which is an Igbo state, so to speak. Even the so-called Niger Delta encompasses Abia State as well, which is an Igbo state. This trying to make the argument for Biafra to center around oil is very, very sad, regrettable, and is something that we are fighting seriously against and why we have Radio Biafra. Such information, such ideology, such thinking and reasoning has no place in a civilized society. We are fighting for our freedom and not for oil, nor for gas. All right, thank you very much, sir, for taking the time and um, coming in. Um, and um, hope that um, you will succeed in a peaceful way. But um, I am an African, and I believe that we should all live together. I, I don't believe in separation. We are having the same situation in Senegal right now, with um, customers trying to get out of, um, the, out of Senegal. And, you know, we had, um, South Sudan, and it has not been successful. South Sudan is a mess. And, you know, we, we need to look at uh, ourselves as brothers and sisters and work towards a peaceful solution, not try to break away. Um, now, I understand what you said about um, your senators not doing their job, but then vote them out, get somebody that will do what it takes to bring Biafra to what you want Biafra to. Once again, I'd like to say thank you very much, and I thank you very much, gentlemen, um, for bringing your leader in, you. you know, thank and, and enlightening us about what your struggle is, and we hope that it works out. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. All right. It's two minutes past the hour of 1 o'clock. You're listening to 89.3 FM.